One of the best requests that I got recently on my channel for one of my subscribers asking about how we can use large language model like OpenAI GPTs and connect it to a database so we can talk to it. It's one of the coolest ideas that you can build if you have a database and you want to integrate AI inside your application which connect this database to an, a large language model and ask it questions and it will return you the answer. And I, and I found a different kind of ways that you can do that actually using JavaScript or Python. And I'm going to talk about them in details. Let's see what we're going to build in action. I'm here asking it a very simple and dumb question. How many albums there? Send this question to the back end. And after a few seconds, it tell me there is 347 albums. And it also give me the query. Let's see what's happening in the back end. Here, actually, after I send these questions, it starts to executing this query in the back end. And here it tell me to, ex to get this result, actually, it, you have to select count all from the public albums, which kind of correct because I have table called albums. And if I want to know how many albums there, I have to count them. This is a step further question which mean it have multiple, which mean it have a longer query. It's not just counting. I'm telling it list the artist per album, which it means there is going to be joining between two tables, between the artist table and the albums table. So let's send it and see the results. It gives me the final result, which select album title as album title, artist name as artist name from public album. Here, I'm, as I said, join public artist on album artist ID. And it will give us the uh, limit bear, bear five. Actually, I didn't set the limit, it set it by itself. And see, let, let's see the results. And here it gives us the final answer for the first five actual, uh, actual artists who made these albums. But if you have been noticing, there is this button, it's called Agent On. I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna set it for yes, and then I'm gonna ask this questions once more here in the back end actually it will go do the same thing but instead of returning just uh, five it will set the limits give me an, an actual output that as you can see is so far impressive than the last one that we saw and the final answer will look like this but before we build anything we need to understand how it work here is the process of how it's done the user always start with the questions and this question, for example, can be how many albums that we have there in this uh, application. Large language model will take these questions with all the names of the table that we have in our database, and it will handle transforming this natural language processing to an actual query that we can use and execute. And then we take this query and, and send it to the SQL database that we have. It can be MySQL, PostgreSQL, SQLite, whatever. It doesn't matter, honestly. And we take this SQL result and we send it once more to the large language model, but we tell it based on this results, answer these questions. Uh, it gives us an, an actual human readable answer that we can understand and use. This is basically it, the flow of how you can build any SQL chatbot that you want. If you're using Bison, you have multiple options, which actually kind of make me jealous. For the, the first one that is very good actually is Vena AI. It, it handles the writing for the SQL for you and it's actually very fast compared to other libraries. It's very straightforward and simple to use. Let's like just buy and install Vena and import it and connect your database and ask away what you want. And it have also the ABI's integration that you can use and basically different kind of tiers. If you're doing data analysis or insight reports about your database, there is a wonderful library made for data science called Pandas AI. Pandas AI have the ability to connect to multiple databases, especially the SQL one, and ask it whatever what you want. You can create charts, insight reports. It's very good if you in the whole board data analysis kind of stuff. And it's used by very big companies. And it's not that old, honestly. It's, this library is like years old. And finally, this is what we are going to use in this video, Langstrain. But I'm using the JavaScript version. 
Langshin have different kind of options. For example, we have here the SQL Sheen that you basically ask a question, simple questions. It return the query directly, then you take this query, send it to your database, and it will return for you an answer. And also it has something called agent. It's more aware of your database. It can answer more complicated questions. Actually, its answer is far better than the, the normal SQL chain query. If we're gonna create this app, we actually need a database that we will gonna use and interact with and test on. Uh, I don't recommend using this on a, a real production database. You have to learn it and use it and see what's and I see how you can use it. I'm gonna leave you this database that I found for PostgreSQL and I'm gonna show you how you can bot it online for free. Let's go to Elephant SQL a platform and create an account and then create an instance name it whatever what you want uh, in my case i call it rag sql i want you to go to browser and inside here we have the ability to to put the query that we want and it, this is how we're gonna create the table and insert some information for it can actually execute and get results i'm gonna leave you this file it have both the tables also the information that you want the first phase i want you to copy until the end of alter and put it over here and then here hit execute but after it's executed you will find you have multiple tables here album artist customer employee and all the stuff is here the second phase i want you to copy this to the end of the file paste it over here and then hit execute which if it's executed correctly you can go here and see for example artist we get some results actually which mean the database is already up and running i want you to copy this url of your database and the name of your database and go to the your env file and put the url until the slash and the name of the database over here then we're gonna put also the open api key because we are going using chat gpt uh, we're gonna use gpt4 and 3.5 turbo for this app so let's see how our code will work and the first that thing that we need to install let's see it in the, our package json over here we of course need language chain language chain community open ai and we need whatever data drive that we will use for example i'm using bostager sql which the driver for it is bg if it's my sql it's my sql and type orm for our back in the first file that we have to pay attention to is the database setup inside the helper folder. This file will handle the necessarily function that we will use for both the SQL agent and the query chain. And the first step that we are doing is connecting to our database using the type ORM by importing data source and give it the type of database that we will use, the URL for and inside ONV, synchronization is set up for true, for sake development, and the login also to see the queries and the errors and the database name itself. Then we have two different kind of models I'm using here. The first one, the GBT4 for the query chain, and the second one for the agent because it's kind of messaging model 3.5 turbo. We're giving like chain the database that we have it's a data source that will understand the, what kind of database that we have and here we creating a function called create sql query chain this function will handle the creation for the sql that we want based on the database that we have we give it the large language model that we want to use and the database and the dialect which the type of the database that we have and finally we export all the stuff from this file let's start with the query chain inside the folder ABI, we have query chain and SQL agent. The query chain is basic, the basic kind of query that we will do. We start with importing the stuff that we're going to use, like next respond to return the final response. A query SQL tool, which is one of the tools inside language chain for SQL. The BROM template, because we want to send the results to large language model and it will return us. There is final results in a human readable way. The parser for the output, runnable pass through and runnable sequence. This post will handle execution to function beneath each other. Then I have here a simple get request in the points and it will look for the parameters Q, which is our questions, and check on it. If it doesn't exist, it will turn error. The first thing that we need to do is making sure that the database is up and running. Then the 
writer of the query, uh, the writer of the SQL query that we have, then the executioner of the query that we want. Uh, this is the main three setup for our logic. If you just want to the query and the separated result without answering, here we get to the large language model stuff. It's kind of Q and A. We start with a template. From here, we give in the prompt template from a template function. We tell it, given this following user question, correspond to SQL query and the SQL result, answers a user questions. And we give it this kind of template, the questions, the SQL query, the results, and the final answer. This kind of template, we're gonna give it the large language model that we have, in our case, GBT4. And the pipeline, we're gonna parse it and get the, the results here. And here that I'm using the runnable sequence. This one will handle the creation of the SQL. And this one will handle taking the results and the questions and giving us the final answer. And here I'm writing a smaller function that will give us only the query, which I think most people will want. Here, the database response is basically executing the chain and give it the questions that we have in the top here we got from the parameters. Finally, after the final response that will come from the large language model, give me the final response with the SQL query. Now for agents. SQL agent is a total different beast actually. Here I have the first thing, initialization for the database. Then here I am creating a toolkit. Here I'm creating a create toolkit for the using database, SQL database that we are using. And then I'm getting the available tools for the SQL that we have. Then I am doing here two template, the first one, the SQL prefix. The SQL prefix will basically define or introduce the agent capabilities and guidelines. Here we tell it what it should do and what it shouldn't do. For example, we, we tell it don't make any statement like insert, update, delay, drop, etc. So it will not affect the database. And here, for example, also we tell it limit yourself to something called top K, which is a guideline we will bot. We can change this number. In my case, I'm bought it a 10, but it can be 15, 25, whatever what you want. And here, another small template, which is called the SQL SFX. This is the SQL SFX, the second template that we will basically provide a structure format for the question and the response. We're creating a SHAP ROM template with the placeholder that we have. The first one here is the system message with the template that we created, the SQL prefix. Here, the second one, the human message prompt. And here we are, this is the input we're going to give to our large language model. With the third thing is the formatted questions and answer that we will have. And finally, the message place holder, which is the async scratch pad. Uh, we are giving the prompt template at the dialect and top placeholder value. Basically here, the top key is always 10. We can change this, as I said, the dialect is that is called data toolkit Dialect in our case is the Bostager SQL. Then here we are creating a OpenAI tool. Is it using the large language model that we have? Is the GBT uh, 3.5 Turbo the tools from the Langshin above and the prompt, which we just like give it the placeholder for our template. And finally, here do we have the creation of the agent executioner. This agent executioner will take this logic we will be able to give it the questions and it will turn us for the answer. For, for the example here, we pass it on an actual questions here that will come in from the front end and will return the result that we can get the output from. But unfortunately, we have some sort of limitation when it comes to the bigger database, which in my opinion, it can't be done in this video. If you want to dive more into agent, I can make a own its own video. So please let me know in the comment if you want me to create a video about only the SQL agent and how we can use it with a larger uh, databases. Because the limitation we will get when we start to use a dealing with like high big columns or database that we will start to see some sort of issues because the limitation of the prompt and the limit of the token that we can send to our large, large language model will not be able to handle the entire database and the queries or the columns. We are now done with the backend. 
Let's take a look to our front end and how simple it is. We have a couple of states here that will handle the loading and the uh, kind of is agent on or off and the results and what type of questions the questions that we have. The very function and the only function that we have is the handled for sending in the back end. I am sitting here checking on the questions if it exists or not. If it doesn't exist, we will not do anything. And setting the loading true, that is the very thing. I'm setting a value called results and based on it, if the agent is on, I will send the entire data to an, a different API called the SQL agent and send the questions to it. If it's not, I will send it to the query chain, which is the normal, uh, basically no one. Here we have the results versus the JSON. We set it in the results state and set that set it for done and the loading is false. I have a very simple here uh, switch, basically, that will switch the agent from on to off, which I have here in the front end. This one is the agent on and off. Based on it, we will handle the sending, which is ABI. Then I have here displaying two different kind of markdown. Markdown is a small component that I have created down here that will display the results in this nice format, as you can see, is kind of HTML render in the front end, which is a little bit tricky when it's come to OpenAI, but with this component, it's very easy. You can do it. I am giving it two different kind of markdown, one for the results and one for the query, because sometimes I return the query in terms of the query chain, not the agent. Even you can do that is the same thing with the agent create a small function that will return only the query. And I have a small form down there in the end of the page, which is here, that will take the question and send it to the back end. And that's it. If you like this kind of content, please hit the subscription and like and notification button. And if you have any requests or questions, please let me know in the comment. I'm gonna do my best to answer it. And I, this is actually my second request video and I'm already working on the third one. It will be about counting object inside the image in a certain area. I will do it in, in the future. Thank you for watching. I hope that you enjoy. My name is Hussam Eddin or you can call me Sam and I will see you in the coming video.